Okay, so the first thing I've done here is just click on this little button here to keep the properties open. And then we're going to be using three order tickets, which we're going to click in the toolbox and a OSO order ticket and an OCO order ticket. Having done that, we can edit each one. So first one, order ticket one, we're going to change the amount to one. I'm just hard coding one contract or share in this program. I'm going to make the account a user input and uh, ditto for the symbol. We're going to make it stop limit. And then we need to put in the limit price and the stop price. We're going to also make those inputs, but we're going to make them the same value for both of them. And then we're going to change them later when we modify the designer generated code. And uh, we need to change the name. I'm just going to call it uh, entry. Okay, so next one, we're going to do the uh, the target. So again, we make, this is a user input, but we're going to use the input that we, we already set up for the uh, entry order ticket. And the same goes for the account. We're going to make the quantity one, and this is going to be a cell, and this is going to be a limit order. We're going to make it uh, good tool cancelled, GTC. And then we're going to base the price off the price of the um, order, the entry order. And we do that by going to, well, we're going to change the name to target TGT. Then we're going to go down to the limit price. And uh, we're going to make this parent plus. And then we're going to uh, increase, uh, include an uh, input here, user input again, which we're going to modify when we copy the code into from the designer generated code. Okay, and then the third order ticket, this is gonna be a stop. So again, we're gonna do the same thing with the symbol. We're gonna use that user input we've already created. Same for the account. I'm gonna make the quantity one. This is gonna be a sell as well, but this is gonna be a stop market order. And we're going to make it good till cancelled, GTC. I'm going to change the name to underscore stop, or rather to STP stop. I'm going to again make it parent plus, and we're going to have a user input. We create by clicking that little icon at the top, yellow icon at the top. Then uh, for the OCO, we're just going to change the name to uh, OCO. And for the uh, OSO, we're going to change the name to OSO. But what we're also going to do is tell it what the primary ticket is. And the primary ticket, of course, is entry. Okay, having done that, what we can now do, we're going to, uh, un going to auto hide the properties because we're not going to need them anymore. We're going to go to the designer generated code and we're going to copy and paste it into our main program. So I just press control C there and go down into the program, which I've already created and going to paste that into the program. Now, what I want to do now is convert this code into a method which will both set up our trades and send those trades to the market. So I'm just going to do a little bit of tidying up, move those inputs down. And then we're going to uh, use set up the using statement. We're going to uh, input a namespace. And this is going to make it a little bit more readable. And then what I'm going to do is just go through and replace every time that appears. Because now that we have, now that we're using that namespace, we don't need to 
include that in front of all the statements uh, as was done in the designer generated code. We also need to remember to delete the toolbox items from the, uh, from the tray at the bottom of the screen. Otherwise we'll get some errors. Now then what I'm going to do is change this method, which was uh, initialize component. We're going to make that into a method which runs when we call it and will then create uh, order orders. I'm going to call it setup order and it's going to have several inputs. The first one is going to be a string for the name of the symbol and we're going to call that sim name and uh, just to make it a little more readable with the capital, capital N. We're going to have a double. This is going to be entry price. We're going to call that ent price and we're going to have some offsets for the for the limit for the target and uh, an offset for the stop which we're going to call lim and underscore stop and I'm going to cut and paste the variables into our method and then we have to remove the null because variables uh, in a method don't have a or rather default value now what we're going to do uh, in the designer generator code we had the i the, the i symbol is the name of the symbol we're going to change that for uh, sim name so that it uh, is in um, agreement with our method and that will change in the other order tickets as well and uh, similarly we're going to do that for the some of the other items. So what we're going to do is just delete the ones that we've used as we go along. So the price, the entry price, the designer generated code set it up as I limit price one. We're going to change that to be ent price. So we're just going to do a replace. And we can delete that line and then the items design and generated code called uh, I stop price offset. We, we're going to call it underscore stop. So we're just going to do a replace for that. And similarly, we're going to do the same thing for the limb. And then having done that, having replaced those names, we can just get rid of those input lines at the top because those uh, values are input in the method. One other thing here, we need to uh, change the stop price offset to minus one times the stop value just so that it's uh, below the price, the entry price. And uh, I'm also going to change the entry name. I'm just adding the sim name to each entry name. Now what we need to do is for the OCO orders, we need to add the orders that will cancel each other if one of them is, is, uh, is executed. So we're going to add to that the target and the stop order. In other words, we want one of these to execute, not both. And for the OCO order, let's just make that stop underscore st or other stp and then for the oco order we don't use siblings we just used a secondary order so it's oco dot secondary rather secondary tickets dot add so we go oso dot secondary tickets dot add and then we add the oco using that and then the last thing that we need is to send the oco order so it's just oco dot send brackets and there we have almost our method complete. We've just got one more thing which we'll do in a little moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to send, we're going to call this method when we're going to do it once when we apply this thing to the chart and we're going to do it on a real time tick. 
And as I've said in the uh, the web page and elsewhere, uh, this program really should only be used with a simulated account because there are not uh, any checks to make sure that it's not already been applied. And if you were to go Control R, then you would send the orders that we're going to be typing in in a moment to the market again and again and again. And the same would apply if your uh, trade station restarted for some reason or you reapplied the program to a chart, etc. Probably other things. I'm not thinking of at the moment, but uh, clearly there's a risk involved. And now we need to call the method. And we do that by putting in the method name and in brackets, we're gonna put in some parameters. And I've just chosen three stocks at uh, random and we put some prices and then the, the offsets. And uh, when I demonstrate this program, probably I'll change some of these values just to make them a little bit more relevant to today's trading. And the idea behind this, as uh, I may have mentioned, is that uh, what my what the Goldpass member wanted to do was effectively be able to generate some text elsewhere that would say something like this, i.e. set up order, uh, bracket, space, quotes, name of stock, etc., and then Put those, put that list into the pro, copy and paste it into the easy language code, and then execute it on a chart. Then, just one final thing we need to do is just go back into the program. At the moment, it would work perfectly well with stocks. What we want to make it do is that uh, work with futures as well. So, I'm just going to ch change these to category, which will tell the program automatically. Uh, what sort of um, symbol it's applied to on a chart. So we're going to verify that and looks like we don't have any errors or warnings.